Live from Atlanta, Georgia, it's theCUBE. Covering IFS World Conference 2018. Brought to you by IFS. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of IFS World 2018 here at the Georgia World Congress Center in Atlanta. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Jeff Frick. We are joined by Peter Schkeltis. I hope I'm saying that correctly. He is the Global Strategy and Sales Director, Enterprise Operational Tel Intelligence here at IFS. Thanks so much for joining us, Peter. Yeah, thank you for uh, having me over here. So let's start, let's start this uh, interview by having you tell our viewers a little bit about what you do at IFS. Well, <laughs> our product actually is, um, is a very cool product if you want to improve your business. And I'm talking business, not IT. Uh, we use an IT tool for doing that, but uh, in the end we are supporting managers to make better and faster decisions. Because in the current uh, environment, current world, change is everywhere, and uh, change is coming more rapidly than ever, whenever. And, uh, and what we do with the IFS EOI, we create a kind of a digital twin of your organization uh, to support all the managers in the organizations to make better and faster decisions connected to each other. It's interesting, the digital twin concept, because we see it a lot in, uh, like GE uses it a lot, where yeah. they'll make a digital twin of, say, yeah. a 737 yeah. engine, because one of those operating, say, out of Dubai is very different yeah. than one of them operating out of Alaska, yeah. so they can run tests and stuff. But I've never heard anyone say a digital twin of an organization that's really novel approach. So how do you do that, and what are some of the benefits that come out of doing that? Yeah, well, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, um, when you talk about a digital twin, there is a reason for having that. And uh, you think about complex assets, and what you would like to do is, is not only look at the assets, but would like to do predictive and even prescriptive. And the question mark, if you look into organizations, they are complex as well, but they are not that visible, and they are not tangible. It's about people, it's about organization, it's organization charts, it's about processes, it's about systems, it's about risk, it's compliance, finance, whatever. Everything, projects, programs, so I can continue with that. Right. But uh, the question mark there, if you, uh, and that all those elements are connected to each other. But how can you, as a manager, but you have to manage that all, how can you make uh, a good decision then, if you don't know how it looks like? And what we do is I actually visualize those, uh, this complexity and bring that to the uh, end user, and the end user in this case uh, is a business owner or a actually a business guy working in an organization. So uh, he's capable of making those better decisions. And that's the Enterprise Operational yeah. Intelligence or the EOI. Yeah, this is how we call it. Yes. That's what we call it. And then when you're looking at this complex organization with the digital twin model, can you kind of switch what you're optimizing for? Because that's always the big question too. What are yeah. you optimizing for? Because then you might turn your levers very differently depending yeah. on yeah. profitability, speed, there's a short-term opportunity. It's a lot of complexity in what are you actually optimizing for. Yeah, that for sure. I mean, there are so many elements connected to each other, so it is complex. And what you do see is that you have the classic BI tools and the classic data discovery tools, and what they do is like, um, they create pictures out of the data, because there are so many sources where so many data, um, but we do it a different way. We do it a different way for a reason, because it's not about our target to make the data better, it's about making your business model better, right. make your company better. And then we start actually uh, modeling your organization and plotting actually the data, not only financial, but also strategic and operational data, and even also risk and compliance data uh, to that business model. And then uh, we have, uh, that's well interesting, we have the platform with having uh, included three different engines uh, which is uh, actually a model engine to create the model of the company. We have a data engine to work with all the data coming from all the different sources. And we have an execution engine, but it's all embedded in one platform. Right. And it is uh, yeah, integrated by design. And with, with sorry, but one, no, right. one more thing to add, Keep going. which is really cool, um, is um, in the end, uh, it's not only backwards looking, but due to the fact that we have the execution engine, you can even put business rules on top and algorithms to go to, go to predictive and even to prescriptive positioning. I, I just, I'm, I'm reacting because you keep talking about the visualizations and yeah. I'm always struck by 
the beautiful visualizations that come out of a lot of these tools. Yeah. And they're pretty pictures, yeah. and they're kind of complicated, yeah. but so often you look at them and you're like, so what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Like, yeah. What's, what, is, what am I supposed to do now based on this yeah. beautifully complex picture? And it's yeah. not usually very obvious. So uh -huh. you know, delivering actionable insights is very different than just creating a beautiful visualization of a bunch of data. Yeah. So what are some of the ways that you help people actually make decisions? Yeah. Well, there are two elements in. And one element is, of course, um, uh, we, I'm talking about ro uh, uh, a role-based uh, uh, cockpits. Mm -hmm. So was, per role is different. So you get actually what you see. I mean, if you are the CEO or right. you have the CFO or you're a team leader or whatever, you know what your work is, I assume. So then uh, you give them the picture they want to see. So we have multiple pictures we can show. And that's one thing. But in the end, it's about people. People have to do something and people have to change. And um, what we have experienced over the past years is uh, if you give somebody a, a tool, just a cockpit, and nothing has really changed. Right. So what we are a big supporter of is, is also to bring in a uh, kind of a performance coach. And a performance coach is a different role and sitting next to yeah, whatever manager and, and, and explaining and working with him together is what is it what we see? What can we do about it? How can we improve? Where can we lower costs? Where can we improve value? Where can we find it? So, and, uh, kind of a performance coach is really important in the implementation approach. Do you see that there will always be a need for a performance coach or will, or, or, or does the performance coach help the user then understand, oh, these are the questions I should be asking when I see data that looks like this? I mean, what's well, the evolution there? Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Um, it's not always necessary. Of course, every organization does have its own major majority. Um, and if organizations are already quite performance-centric and, 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 and know how to work with metrics, um, the performance code is not even needed. Uh, but you have all kinds of different organizations. Right. So most of the time, we just advise to use it as well. Uh, but again, that's um, step by step. Uh, think big, make small steps. Right. So it's an agile approach as well. And I'm sure the performance coach will eventually get baked into the software where it tells you, you know, if you tweak this lever here, it's going to have that impact. If you tweak that lever here, it's going to have this impact. We see some of that in kind of the sports fitness um, devices yeah. where now they're adding a, a smart uh, software driven coach beyond just telling you that you ran, you know, four miles or whatever. So yeah. I would imagine that's got to be something you guys will implement. Because you've got the data, you know what the factors are, you've got the digital exactly. twin. Yeah. So any good examples that, that you can share of customers who are starting to put this into, into practice yeah. and some of the results that they're yeah. getting? Well, we have uh, quite some uh, customers over the world. Um, actually all kinds of, uh, every, well not every country in the world, but all region, yeah, definitely. Um, and we have them from, from um, power plants up to financial institutions up to airlines and everything in between from manufacturing, etc. cetera. Um, what we do see is that um, when you start with the, the, the EOI concept, uh, we bring in, uh, the, we start most of the time with the, uh, the board uh, because if you want to improve your organization uh, from strategy to operation, that should be really bundled so that the people do the right things. Uh, but if we don't get a clear view on strategy, yeah, how can you expect that all the operational people can do the right things? So that's how we start. And then um, and you work with that and you have those um, first benefits, which is already after a couple of hours, uh, while having you know the, the most nice example, if I have the board and I give them all white piece of paper and ask them, uh, can you write down the strategy of the company? And I get five different back, you know? And when we just say like, it is important to have strategy connected to operations, Mm, how can we start change there? So and then that's the way we started, and, and then you already see benefits there. But during the process, and, and with the model-driven capability of the platform, by bringing more and more into the connected cockpits, yeah, the more, the more you see and the more benefits you will have. So we have examples of total productivity of a company um, in, a, in a power plant of increasing 20% productivity. 20%? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Um, and, and we even have uh, performance where we have 90% um, savings, 90% savings of getting all the reports in place. Yeah, that's a really interesting numbers, I can tell you. It's amazing how much, how much inefficiency there is still in so many places that can be yeah. wrung out yeah. with the right kind of application and the right focus. Yeah. 
No, it's yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely, and, that, and and there is a reason why there is that uh, that that possibility because when organizations grow, I mean, uh, they will be um, uh, impacted on on different um, uh, def uh, different uh, how do you say it um, departments departments science, yeah right, different right, departments right. so then you you're lacking an end-to-end -end view because everybody is looking in his own silo, uh, which is a common nature of grow, uh, but. While having the connected cockpits and connecting the dots there, uh, you find really money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're looking for. <laughs> I know that one of the big, the big uh, objectives is for customers to be able to see results right away and yeah. to see benefits right away. And that was also a point that was made in the in the keynote by CEO Darren Roos: is this real time to value yeah. that customers are looking for. Do customers have almost unrealistic expectations though because of this 24 seven world that we live in that they are going to see something right away, this return on investment. And is that ever a challenge that you're trying to meet? That, well, not really. Um, you can expect it, but uh, up so far, and we are quite busy for several years right now, um, it was always the other way around. So. Uh, the customers are like, huh? Wow, ooh, <laughs> was it possible? <laughs> so they didn't expect us, and um, that's what I like. Then see you coming, and then bang, the result is there. But what I said earlier, I think big but make small steps. And then the whole implementation approach and the model-driven nature of the product uh, gives us the opportunity to, to do work in sprints. Because I don't believe in, in, in waterfall approaches uh, or uh, blueprinting uh, organizations, because what happens today or tomorrow, we don't know. And uh, well, I c how can I handle if I have to do blueprinting up months? Right. You don't know what's happening. Right. So that's why we have a very agile approach in the sprint methodology in the, in the implementation. And uh, yeah, uh, every sprint is actually a business case on itself. Yeah. Yeah. But, and as one example, we have now with uh, <laughs> with an um, an uh, service uh, customer in the UK. We even have a cost saving of 27 million pounds over a couple of years, and it's, it's, it's not my uh, maths, but they were their own figures. Right. So, uh, yeah, they figured out like that, so that's good. Yeah, it's uh, just, you know, the, the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step, right? It and is, it's, yeah. and it's, it's such a simple concept, but people, a lot of people are still baked into this, I need to define it, right? I need an MRD and a PRD, and we're going to put this big implementation, and that's just not it, just, just do, right? Just, move a little further, because you're never there anyway, right? There you're, is no yeah, exactly, there. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's, a, it's a transformation path, but it's a daily transformation. Right, right. Yeah. I'm wondering if, there, if you've observed any ancillary benefits of this digital twin concept in the sense of encouraging more experimentation in companies. And as Jeff was talking about, if I move this lever this way and this this way, if I make this tweak, tinker, the, tinker here or there, yeah. Are you seeing that in, in the sense of, of companies and individual employees just being more willing to try things? Um, yeah, but it's very depending on the, the type of organization, I have to be honest. Okay. Um, so, uh, but, but yes, I do see, of course, people are used to, to get their information, you know. The early newspapers, less and less new papers on paper are there, uh, so which is helping uh, to, to use uh, cockpits on a digital way. Um, but the thing is, and that's very interesting, if we all walk the same way, and that's the funny thing if you do it on the approach like the EOI approach, from a strategy to operation approach, instead of making data of pictures out of data, then uh, you direct everybody in the same way. And you know, in every organization, you have people, they walk like this, and you have people, they do like this. <laughs> and that is a combination. But the interesting thing is, if you all walk the same direction, then the benefit is bang, it's massive. And that's really interesting because if you have people who walk the other way around. Right, totally. yeah. So that's actually the digital twin and, and, um, yeah, and I think EOI in this case, if you talk about digital transformation, for digital transformation, you need a digital twin, you need IFS EOI. I think I need a digital twin. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a great concept. Again, we hear it all the time in, in industrial devices yeah. as a really interesting way to model and yeah. test, and like you said, be predictive and prescriptive, yeah. but I've never heard it really applied to the application of an organization, which is yeah, at least as cool complex as a jet engine. It is, it is. But people, <laughs> you know, it's the, you know, the blue worker and the white worker, uh, the, 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 the color in this case, and now, yeah, th this is the next step. Yeah, for sure. All right. Great. And it well, sounds logic, isn't it? 
Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Especially when you start testing and, and, and tweaking things. And in Absolutely. The end, in the end, you have reality. Reality is changing. Oh, and then you have the digital twin. And of course, so the digital twin should be changing, of course. If the real world is changing, then this digital twin should be changed. And we'd connect it. But if we want to make scenarios and predictive elements in the digital twin, then the real organization has to change. And the, ah, that's absolutely the next step, and, and we're just good in it. Great. Well, All thanks right. so much for joining us, Peter. It's been a really great conversation. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. I'm Rebecca Knight for Jeff Frick. We will have more from theCUBE's live coverage of IFS World in a little bit. All right.